Hi everyone, Joe Brady here. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, I was inspired by the fact that I'm actually going on a vacation next week to think about the kind of gear and the kind of thought processes that might help you get the photos you want when you're on vacation. When you're doing that, when you're trying to figure out a kind of photo gear to bring, it's important to consider factors such as the destination, if you have any activities planned, your own personal preferences, and your level of photography expertise. So I'd want to talk about some important things to consider in order to get the most out of your vacation photography. The first thing you can do to really make it easier is to understand the destination. What do you know about it and what are your photography needs going to be depending on what you plan on engaging in? Different destinations and activities might require different types of gear. For example, well, if you're going on a wildlife safari in Africa, you're going to need a different set of gear compared to a city tour in Europe. Also consider your experience. How expert are you with your gear? Vacation photography is a more informal type of photography rather than going on a photo workshop. When you consider the types of photography you want to pursue, what do I mean by that? Well, landscapes, wildlife, cityscapes, astrophotography, just kind of snapshot lifestyle of where you're visiting, you're best off simplifying your gear so that you can capture the shots that you want with ease. Another important factor is weight and portability. And when I'm traveling, I like to minimize, which is why I switched over to a Micro Four Thirds system. Now, one of the primary reasons I did this is the size and weight of the lenses balanced with the quality of the images they produce is now a possibility. For example, when I go away next week, this is the only camera I'm bringing. Well, of course, I'll have my phone with me, but this is my OM5. You can see it's ridiculously light, and I'm going to be bringing this lens. This is called a pancake lens. It's basically a 24 to 80 millimeter equivalent, and when you turn it on, it does expand out a bit, but this entire thing weighs very little. Could I put big lenses on it? Absolutely, and I have. Going smaller, including compact cameras, and even limiting pics to your phone is going to be plenty of camera depending on your needs and your plans for the images. Now, the vast majority of us have smartphones, so yes, that's certainly one camera option. Since you're going to have it with you, well, you might as well use it when it's appropriate. Today's latest smartphones have pretty impressive capabilities, and they're capable of producing pretty decent sized prints. I've had no trouble with 11 by 14s, for example. If you want to get the absolute best out of your smartphone, get familiar with shooting RAW for the best prints possible. That gives you the possibility of actually doing an edit like you would with a RAW out of your camera. There are a handful of third-party apps that will give you more control of your phone and make it operate like a camera. So next would be compact cameras. These are more than a step up from smartphones in terms of image quality, manual control, and continuous zoom. Unless, of course, you choose a camera with a fixed focal length lens. Today's good compact cameras can capture image quality. Honestly, that will rival any camera. And of course, that brings us to DSLR and mirrorless cameras. When you're really focused on producing images during your trip, your DSLR or mirrorless camera is certainly going to give you the most flexibility. This, of course, assumes that you're willing to bring along lenses to cover all the possible types of photos you're after. So let's talk about lens selection. Now, you can go from wide to middle to zoom and all-in-ones. Let's start with all-in-ones. All-in-one zoom lenses can be very versatile because they cover a wide range of focal lengths without having to change lenses. Now, the downside of many all-in-one lenses is that they do get big and heavy. I have one right here uh, for this camera, by the way. This is a 12 to 100, which on a full frame is equivalent to a 24 to 200 lens. Now it's a great lens and it has a great versatility, but it's actually about the same size as my camera and weighs more. Now, if that's what you wanna do, if you really wanna cover a wide, wide range and not have to change lenses, then this is an option. On the other end of the spectrum have wide angle lenses. I find wide angle lenses great for cityscapes, close up work, and sometimes for landscape photography depending on the views. So in addition to the standard mid-range lens like a 24 to 70, the next thing is a telephoto lens. But unless you have a smaller camera, let's face it, zoom lenses can get pretty big and heavy. Again, another reason why I switched to the Micro Four Thirds system. This is my 150 to 600 lens. That's pretty amazing, isn't it, that it's this big? It weighs less than a pound, and 
the quality is amazing. So I'm not even bringing this on my next trip, but I will bring it when I head to Europe soon. Now, if you're after distant subjects or you're doing things like birds in flight or sports photography, having a zoom lens with you is going to be necessary. And then lastly, a prime lens. Now, I do like having wider apertures for better low light performance and subject isolation by blurring the background. But there's somewhat of a uh, cult around prime lenses when you have to use your feet to zoom. But this limitation can also make for inspiring creativity. So honestly, Prime versus Zoom, it's a personal choice. So what accessories should you consider having along? Well, for me, the number one thing is a tripod. They're useful for so many reasons. Long exposures, night photography, making sure you get in the picture. Bring a tripod that's the lightest possible, yet stable enough to safely support your camera. Now, when I go on vacation next week, here's the tripod I'm bringing. I'm just bringing one of these little bendy leg things. Uh, the beauty of this is I can put both my camera on it because this camera is so light and I have a mount for my phone. The nice thing about the uh, bend legs is I can actually wrap this around a fence post or a tree and even have it hang upside down, uh, which is something I'll often do with the phone when I'm recording video. In addition, I'm not sure if I'm bringing it, but I also have kind of a higher end little tabletop tripod. This is actually, this will actually support a full size DSLR. It's that strong, uh, but it just fits in the tiniest little place, yet will give you the ability to put a big camera on it. I'm probably not gonna bring this one because this one is gonna support my camera, but when I go to Europe, I think I will throw this in the bag just so I have those times if I wanna put it on a table or some other support to capture a picture and I want to be in it. Of course, extra batteries and memory cards. It's essential for extended shooting sessions without having to have charging points or computer storage. With the capacity of today's memory cards, 128, 256 gigabytes, unless you're going on safari or shooting birds in flight at 60 frames per second, generally having a couple of spares is usually enough. As far as batteries go, uh, even though this camera can charge batteries directly in it, I like to have a, uh, an external battery charger, just, just a third party one, and I will plug this in. Next up would be having some lens filters. Now there's a standard trio, they're UV filters, typically touted for lens protection, polarizing filters for reducing glare and darkening skies and making clouds pop, and ND filters for long exposure photography. Honestly, with my camera system, the one I use is a circular polarizer, and that's generally it. Why is that? Well, for protecting a lens, that's the, the main use that people tout UV filters. That's fine, but really what you should be doing is using the hood on your lens. Nothing is gonna protect your lens better than the lens hood because it's keeping the lens away. Now, yes, it's cheaper to put a cheap UV filter on the front of your camera than have the front element of your lens hit because then it's gonna destroy it. So that's a personal preference. As far as ND filters, the OM cameras have ND shooting built into them, so it is no longer something I need for these cameras unless I want it to go really extreme. But a circular polarizer, can't be replaced yet, so that is the one filter that goes with me everywhere I go. Something you might not spend a lot of time thinking about, but you should, is a camera bag. Just like when choosing your camera, choosing a bag that's comfortable to carry and well-made to handle the rigors of travel, make sure you get yourself a good camera bag. I personally prefer using a sling bag. In fact, I have my bag right here. And what, the, what a sling bag is, is this one strap goes across my back rather than having the two straps from a backpack style bag. I find that wears my shoulders down. By the way, again, the benefit of going to a smaller camera system is in this bag, which happens to be on my website, by the way. This bag carries two camera bodies, five lenses, my laptop, all my batteries, and my accessories right in here, and it never leaves my side. So... One more thing, weather protection. Well, it depends on where you're going, but weather conditions vary. And depending on the country, there's some places it's just you're gonna hit some rain. Uh, Ireland, for example, is known for being extremely green, and it's extremely green because it gets some rain. So really what you need to do to make sure that your vacation or your workshop is the most fun you can have, you've got to educate yourself on the destination. Regardless of the gear chosen, when you know more about the places and subjects you're going to visit and photograph, 
you can plan ahead for camera settings, the gear needed, and make sure what you have matches your vision for the photos that you want to capture. Finding a nice balance of size, weight, and functionality will make your travel gear allow you to get the images that you're after. That's it for today. I wish you happy travels. I'll report back to you after I get back from my next trip. Till next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you online again soon. Bye-bye.